I fucked up. I mean, I really fucked up. And as much as I don't really want to shoot this video, I've had to think, you know, what's the greater good? And I think the worst kind of fuck up is when we hurt other people. And that's exactly what I've done. And I hope, you know, that a lot of guys that are dating in Ukraine, looking for a good Ukrainian wife, will watch this video and be the wiser as a result of my fuck up. Imagine meeting as many beautiful traditional ladies as it takes until you meet the one. That exactly what you can win right now. Just comment, subscribe and share. The winner will be announced live right here. And you're going to hear directly from the client that I hurt as a result of my fuck up. But first I'd like to just rewind the clock and give you a bit of the backstory. You know, when you start a marriage agency in Ukraine, uh, you never have enough ladies. You know, there's always clients that you can't help. And those typically are the either really young clients or the really old clients, you know. The guys in the middle, like for, in the 40s, slam dunk, you know, usually. So, in an effort to help more clients, to give more choice of beautiful ladies uh, for clients, because there are clients that can only find, you know, a handful of ladies in our 1200 database. What we did was we took on sub-agencies. And I want to share with you how hard, just how hard we vetted these sub-agencies. Um, you guys remember Irina, God rest her soul, our amazing matchmaker. We did two charity auctions for her and raised about, I think it was about $6,000. Uh, for her fight against cancer. Well, Irina was a very experienced matchmaker and owner of a marriage agency for about 10 years or so in Crimea. So she had a lot of contacts, she knew a lot of people in this industry and she was very experienced. So I put Irina in charge of vetting a bunch of little agencies sprinkled all around Ukraine. You know, and I gave her a checklist to follow, check this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and, you know, meet with each owner and sit with them face to face and ask them these hard questions. So she did that. And as a result, we had six sub agencies. What happened next? I would have never imagined in a million years something like this could happen, but it did happen. And now I'm going to play a video from my client that it happened to. And he's going to tell you, you know, the backstory. So let's roll this video and I'll be right back. What uh, tips do you have to guys? How can you tell a good agency from a bad one? Well, it's, it's not an easy task. There's no point of dating in Ukraine or experience level where you're going to be completely free of scams. Just recently, I had thought I'd come across an excellent one, small boutique agency that knew most for girls. And I was on a date with a girl in this agency that I really liked. We connected very well. And it turned out midway through the date that this girl was married, that she actually had a husband and was on the date with me at the same time. Like she came out and told you this? At the beginning of the date, she was single, and that was the way she presented herself. Midway through the date, I had her translate something on her phone. And she takes her phone out of her pocket, takes it off of airplane mode, opens up the translator, and all these text messages come in from this guy. And I said, Busted. Who is this guy? And at this point, she had a few drinks in her, and she releases, oh, it's my husband. And oh, boy, boy. I was so shocked, you know, we had chemistry, it was going so well, I was excited about, you know, our, our meeting, and it, it instantly just took a nosedive, the worst. But it didn't stop there, no. As the night went on, a few more minutes, I found that not only did she have a husband, she had been paid to go on a date with me. How did that come out? How did you find that out? 
I found that out because I had asked her how many guys she had gone on a date with. Because knowing she's married, I said, well, if you're married, why are you still going on dates with guys? And she gave me some BS answer. And I asked her, well, how many guys have you gone on a date with? And she told me some insane number. She said 700. And I, and I quizzed her and I said, really, 700? You know, you're a young girl, like, 700, you, you're going on dates like every day then. And she said, well, not quite, but very often. And I said, and I asked her, if you're going on dates with 700 guys, then are you saying no to any dates? And she said no. And at that point in the conversation, it flipped to, okay, why are you going out so frequently with men? And she became defensive and opened up, told me the truth, and said it was about the money. Wow, so she actually told you, I get paid each date, for each date. She said she gets paid a certain amount for going on every day with a man. What has this done to your feeling that you know, you can choose a good agency. I believe that there are little to no completely 100% honest agencies in Ukraine. I would assume that even the agencies that are so-called honest have a little bit of funky business going on inside them. 50 what Shades of Grey. Back and forth money, whether that is getting girls who are not serious they're not motivated to have a family but they have joined the agencies for gifts or for some type of financial reward every month and this is a problem has this pulled the rug out from under you basically in terms of your belief that you can choose a good agency to meet ladies at in the future mm. so you've been duped but do you feel you can be savvy enough to spot it next time? No. No, there's no way. There's no way they know everything up front. You can't guess. Like, there's, there's just absolutely zero way. Sometimes you'll get a recommendation of an agency from a friend. And that friend doesn't know, but he's being scammed. He thinks this agency's honest because he met a girl. But his girl he's with might have actually gotten paid too. There's no way to know it. So there you have it, right from the horse's mouth, Mr. X, who is, yeah, my client. I did a interview series with him, eight parts. It's in a playlist in the description below this video. So if you want to see his entire sordid past of dating in Ukraine, anyway, back, back to the lesson at hand. There are hundreds, I would say probably thousands, of these little boutique agencies all over Ukraine. And the thing is, like you'll hear Mr. X explain, you know, you, you think you can trust them. You walk in, you talk to the owner, they have maybe 100 ladies in their database, and you have that personal touch, that personal connection. And you can't believe that they would be paying their ladies, for example, to meet with you. Did you trust this owner, like? This owner? Um, came and met me twice. I met two of her girls. She was present there for the first few minutes of our meetings. And because of that, I really did feel connection. I, I felt a sense of trust. I felt like there was nothing funky going on with my dates. That's why it completely just side struck me when I found out about this. This owner every single time, as far as I'm aware, suggests this particular girl who I dated to them to date also. And because she's pretty and because she's smart, most guys take her up on this offer. For her, in her business, a date with this girl is like an upset. So she's got a database of girls which are like for reaching out for web or marketing. And then a man might be interested in a 40-year-old in lady and dating her. And then she suggests, well, hey, how about this young, beautiful, perfect looking girl too? I showed her your photo and she's interested in meeting you. The guy has absolutely zero clue that she was not shown a photo. The guy has absolutely no idea. She has no interest in him. And he's paying the agency money 
going out, spending an hour, two hours of his time, uh, paying for dinner expenses. And it's a, it's a complete scam and it's a complete shame that this happens through these boutique agencies. And I'm afraid to admit that it happens a lot more than we like to think. I'm here telling you, living in Ukraine, um, you know, living, eating, breathing, sleeping, this business that you just can't tell. There's no level of due diligence that you can do because I've done the absolute best and I, I shudder to say, I would challenge anybody that says that they can do it better than we have tried to do it and we have failed. And more so, Irina was a very uh, experienced matchmaker and marriage agency owner and she got duped. So my question to you guys is, if we got duped, what makes you think <laughs> you can be any luckier coming to Ukraine as a naive foreigner, not speaking the language? You understand that these little agencies, they can't make a go of it without the mothership. So they plug in to the motherships, these huge PPL sites, and they get paid per letter. They get, they get a piece of the action, basically. Well, more and more agencies are starting up and their whole business model is they don't have any ladies of their own. They use sub agencies and they swear that they have vetted these sub agencies and you can rest assured you're meeting good, honest ladies in these sub agencies. Their business model is they're the marketing engine and they have little agencies that they work with in, in towns around Ukraine. And they try to build up a brand. Can this brand vet the ladies from all these little agencies underneath them? What do you think about this? No, they can't trust them. If an experienced, you could call it be a dater in Ukraine, um, can't go directly to an agency um, who's, who he has thought is reputable, and then find out that not so reputable. How can a larger agency that's partnering with dozens of agencies all throughout Ukraine, how could they possibly have a screening system, these individual contractors of theirs, to use the system or to be honest about? It? And due to the economic situation here and due to some cultural factors, um, people will lie for money. And although this agency can come across as very honest and forthright. Um, the reality is you can't trust it. The only way to know is to experience it and, and to, to basically do your due diligence. That's all. As a result, we no longer work with sub agencies, needless to say, because I understand clearly the only ladies I can trust is the ones that Titiana our head matchmaker, my partner, has personally vetted. She's personally met with them all. But most importantly, we didn't advertise to find them. They came to us by word of mouth, usually from a couple like Gary and Elena on August 8th that got married in Kiev. We've had about 30 ladies already register from that wedding. And that creates a spillover effect. And it doesn't end there. It's work. It's a lot of hard work maintaining uh, a good database of sincere marriage-minded ladies, you know. Up till she goes on her first date, we do our best, but I tell you that first date, that is, you know, a tell-all. <laughs> you see from her conduct on the first date if um, she really is a good girl. So then you have to maintain that database. You have to always be in touch with your clients. And if you detect anything that might be a little bit off, you have to look deeper into it. And sometimes you have to purge ladies. We do it. We watch their, their, their social media accounts for any suspicious activities. We watch them like a hawk. And we have a full-time person that's always scouring our database. My final point, guys, I think I've hammered home. It's clear by now. Never, 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 ever work with agencies or anyone that doesn't have their own ladies that use sub agencies and that's who you're meeting just too risky you never can tell i think that's clear from my fuck up keep in mind our hardest job as match guarantee 
is the same as your hardest job, trying to find you know, a good woman for love and marriage in Ukraine. And that is, you've got to meet sincere, marriage-minded ladies. Keep that in mind. Now, on a final parting note, to continue your due diligence journey, I'm attaching a video in the description below that went viral called The Dirty Little Secret Marriage Agencies Do Not Want You To Know. It went viral about three years ago. And I was not a popular member of this marriage agency community. I promise you that after I published that video. That was the beginning of my downward popularity slide. But at the end of the day, I'm not here to win a popularity con contest. I'm here to look out for your best interest. I hope you guys get that. Coming up in part two and part three of I Fucked Up, we're gonna go deeper down this rabbit hole and I'm gonna teach you in great detail what red flags to look for and how to vet marriage agencies and dating sites in Ukraine on your journey looking for love here. And in part three, well, in part three, we get kind of tricky. We're gonna take a look at a fictitious situation, which is going to tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt that we're dealing with a fox in the hen house for a particular agency that says they're good. Um, and after you look at these red flags, you decide for yourself. See you coming up in part two and part three of I Fucked Up. Hey guys, check it out. Look ahead, what a serendipitous coincidence. You know, doesn't that show you love? It's out there for everyone. It's most certainly out there for you. Love is waiting for you out there. Love is for everyone, okay? It's just a matter of being bold enough to go looking for it, not giving up till you find her, and you will find her. See you next time. Imagine meeting as many beautiful traditional ladies as it takes until you meet the one. That's exactly what you can win right now. Just comment, subscribe, and share. The winner will be announced live right here.